Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. I'll ask the IT to cut over just a couple of slides to kind of give us a, uh, an opening to uh, uh, what I'm sure I could go on for a couple of hours on and have been told I have just a few minutes. So we'll, we'll make sure I keep it within the, those parameters. So uh, if we go to the next slide, please. Um, with, the, with the advent of the COVID-19 coronavirus uh, pandemic, a lot of new words and phrases have been entered into our daily lexicon, such as pandemic, isolation and quarantine, social distancing, we're just taking the you know, PPE, we're just taking these things as just a matter of our normal conversations today uh, that two months ago just wasn't there. And, and in the next couple of slides with the information, I'm going to try to go back and, and remind everybody of just how far we have gone in just the last two months. So uh, the public safety, uh, uh, um, public safety in Edwardsville opened up its emergency operations center at the public safety building on March, and I can't see the date, I'm sorry, I believe it says uh, March 14th. Um, the, wow. the, uh, uh, with that opening, it was just starting to lay the groundwork for uh, uh, starting up our, our city's emergency plan, getting all of the department heads involved in what we need to do as we were looking ahead because it became clear by that time uh, that there was going to be significant impact to the daily lives of our, of our uh, citizens and of our operations as the uh, local governance. Uh, as it ended up, the business office's last day of being open was March 20th. Uh, 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 closed down at the end of business on March 20th per the governor's uh, stay, first stay-at-home order. So by Monday, March 23rd, which was less than two months ago, the state of Illinois was reporting 1,049 positive cases, uh, up from just 422 before the weekend. That's how quickly it was starting to escalate. And they reported nine deaths, all of those were in the Chicago area. The uh, Madison County itself, this is on March 23rd, Madison County had two positive cases and no deaths. Next slide, please. As of today, Illinois has 87,937 confirmed positive cases across 99 counties in the state. Unfortunately, the death total in the state is 3,928. And to date, there have been 512,000 plus tests performed in the state of Illinois alone. The state is doing between uh, uh, 15 and 20,000 tests uh, per day now that we're, we're, we're getting these done. Next slide, please. To bring that home a little bit further and uh, uh, oh, you know, this isn't all a Chicago thing. Madison County, uh, from those from those just a few reported uh, confirmed cases and no deaths, as of today, there have been 456 confirmed positives in Madison County. These are Madison County residents. 35 lives have been lost. 85 are still hospitalized as of today. 119, I'm sorry, 190 are considered recovered. These are the uh, those who have been formally uh, uh, confirmed to have COVID-19, and there are many others that were not able to get tested in the early days uh, of the, of this uh, outbreak and uh, just recovered at home on their own. So they're not they're not included in those numbers. I believe that's all the slides. Check one more. Yes. So just to expound on that, one of the, again, bringing this home even closer than just Madison County. Um, one, of our, one of our nursing homes, they're referred to as congregate care centers, our skilled nursing centers, um, uh, as of this past weekend, had 91 positive cases between its residents and its, and its uh, employees. And out of that 17, unfortunately uh, passed away as a result of the coronavirus. 
there's a not, there are two other uh, uh, skilled care centers in Madison County that have uh, positives. One of them uh, where uh, uh, there have been seven deaths related to it, uh, in addition to 31 positives and one with just nine positives, no deaths at this time. The unfortunate thing is it's been it's become clear at the international, national, state level, and local level that the that the most susceptible uh, to the the worst part of this virus are those in our congregate care settings. Um, we're doing everything that we can to get that on track and right. Um, uh, we've been in regular conversations with the Madison County Public Health. Uh, we've given support where we can for this. Um, uh, right now, that care center believes they got it under control uh, and they're just trying to get everybody through the uh, uh, through the various stages of sickness that they have there. Uh, what did the city do in general in terms of this? Well, we did open our emergency operations center, as I mentioned earlier. We instituted the city's emergency operations plan. Interestingly, we are in the last stages of a complete rewrite uh, of that emergency operation plan, and we just went off of the new plan rather than the old plan uh, as, as we were uh, uh, operating forward. Uh, that's something that still needs to be completed. Uh, we immediately had to identify essential workers uh, within the uh, uh, within the city. Uh, some of them were able to work from home. Uh, some of them uh, had to be furloughed, unfortunately. We closed down the public buildings and other facilities like parks. Uh, uh, we kept open the walking and biking paths after just a very brief closure when we saw that that was in fact in line with the governor's executive order. Um, we had to close down the Wildy Theater and the events plan there, the watershed, Children's Museum, Benjamin Stevenson House, the library tried to stay open as long as it could uh, with, with curbside service until uh, everything was shut down by the executive orders uh, of, the, of the governor. Uh, very broadly, we had to institute new policies within all the departments, but particularly in police and fire operations. Uh, those, those policies had everything to do from from what kind of personal protective equipment had to be worn to how we approach the general public and, and mostly how we can keep the virus from spreading into our own facilities, which could very easily knock out a whole shift uh, uh, and leave us in a position where we wouldn't be able to provide the emergency services that are expected uh, by our citizens. Uh, we've had to seek, seek out and find personal protective equipment uh, in much larger quantities because we're burning through it much, much quicker, particularly with the one congregate care, uh, you know, many, many ambulance trips to, uh, to, that, to that center. Um, that's not been an easy find. Anyone who's trying to find masks or gloves or goggles or, or gowns uh, can, can testify to that. Uh, the state has helped to some degree with some shipments. We've had some very generous donations uh, of masks in particular, but other do donations from businesses uh, and an outpouring from the citizens to, to help us as well. Uh, we've increased the cleaning and disinfection in all of our buildings for the safety of our workers and soon as we open up the safety of our citizens uh, doing business in our public facilities. We've worked with the businesses uh, doing the best that we could uh, uh, for those that could only work uh, 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 in a uh, diminished role, certainly by delaying the new food and beverage tax. Uh, that, that's going to help uh, 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 some of our restaurants and bars. Um, passing local ordinance to provide for restaurants, they could only do curbside delivery to, to allow for package alcohol uh, to be sold as well. That was an emergency uh, uh, temporary order that, that the city swung into. Uh, and, but through it all, you know, we've tried to remain flexible, responding to the, uh, the problems as they arose uh, and we tried to main, uh, keep paramount the health and welfare of the community uh, as we've stepped through this. This is new to everyone. There's no one within the city that uh, uh, was working for the city uh, when the last major pandemic hit in 1918. Uh, so a lot of these things we are uh, having to learn on the fly and can react to it, though many of the things we had prepared for ahead of time. Continuance of governance is really the key, that we're able to keep uh, the, the 
business of the city and of its residents going. Um, that, that's been through video conferences, just like this. It's been through changing how we do our meetings, uh, how we're interacting with the public, but still getting the business of the city completed. And that's most important. Um, there were a couple of questions that were asked uh, that, that, that I do need to touch on as well as where do we go from here? Uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, for this summer and this fall. Some of that's going to fall with the school district and with the colleges uh, and, and, and how they're, they're going to deal with the, the uh, specific problems they're dealing with in terms of uh, uh, education. You have to remember that the city of Council, uh, of Edwardsville, excuse me, is also an employer. Uh, uh, we have, uh, you know, way more than 100 employees, full-time employees, that uh, we have to take care of those employees doing this important job of, of governance uh, as well. So uh, uh, we are, in fact, taking a lot of steps to make sure that our buildings are going to be safe for our workers and for the citizens that come into that. We're ensuring that the governance is going to continue. There will be uh, challenges, uh, specifically in regards to the finances because of the, the impact to the entire economy uh, that, that, this, um, uh, that this pandemic has, has pressed uh, everybody into, has, has touched virtually everyone in the city and of course across the nation. Uh, and the other question was, uh, have there been mistakes, you know, and what are we learning from this? Uh, that's, a, that's a hard introspective question. Uh, certainly, you know, mistakes, uh, should the emergency plan have already been completed? Yes. Um, uh, it was something that was a long-term project. Uh, fortunately, it was completed enough to where we were able to move forward without that, any hiccups on that. Uh, did we have enough PPE? for uh, an unforeseen pandemic of this size. No, but we're addressing that uh, as well. Uh, Business-wise, uh, the city did a very good, has done a very good job and has been talking for the last several months in regards to, in regards to our emergency funds. How much cushion should we have in our reserve funds for an event just like has occurred? Uh, and because uh, while, we're, while we're tweaking that policy, uh, looking ahead, because those reserves were there, we've been able to get through this and make sure that there was no break in the, uh, in the governance uh, uh, that we're providing for the community. So are there mistakes? There's always mistakes. Are we learning? I like to think that we're learning uh, on the fly and uh, uh, God forbid there's another pandemic. Uh, certainly um, I've got my manual uh, ready to go here uh, for the next one uh, with all the guidance and materials that we're watching on literally on a daily and hourly basis coming from the state, uh, from the federal government, the CDC, wherever we can get it, we're trying to stay on top of it. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any specific questions uh, coming from the aldermen, but uh, that's pretty much my presentation. Thank you very much, Chief. 